Every November to March, a strange drama happens as the states of Kelantan, Pahang, Trunganu flood like crazy as waters rain down, destroying dams, flooding embankments, and causing thousands upon thousands of people to evacuate. That's exactly what happened this year. In Malaysia, we faced one of the biggest floods that we've ever had in our history with about 122,000 people getting displaced, including, by the way, one chief minister of Kedah right here, who apparently had to run a skedaddle off from his ministerial residence. Occasionally, there is the interesting weirdo who treats this like a water park type situation, but in reality, it is very sad, with millions of ringgit of property damage right there, taking refuge in shelters. Without question, it's the kind of thing that you call a national disaster, which is why you see the Prime Minister just casually coming up and saying, no more holidays guys, you're working on the floods. For 20 something odd years of my life right there, I'd always read news about how there was a flood here, there was a flood there. And I just had to wonder, do we not have technology? But why exactly does it happen? So flooding in Malaysia happens because of a combination of rain and overflooding of river systems. Now let's first talk about the rain. So November to March is when what we call the Northeast Monsoon comes. So that's basically air that comes from the Siberian high pressure system that comes all the way in to Malaysia across the South China Sea. Now the across the sea part is important because think of a fan. When you have a fan blowing over a bowl of water, what happens is that the water ends up getting evaporated. What normally happens is that when the wind just passes over water, then it evaporates, the water goes up into the sky, forms clouds, and boom, that's how rain comes down. But the monsoon is a little bit different right there because what happens is that the monsoons, right, the air keeps on blowing over the sea. So that's like an infinite source of moisture. Kedah, Kelantan, Truganu, these are all east coast states, right? So they all get all that moist air, but that's not all. The air also passes over a very important mountain range, which is called the Titiwangsa range. So what happens there is that the moist air hits the mountain range and it starts to go up. But then when it goes up, what happens is that it cools down and it also loses pressure. So what happens is that clouds form. So then, whoosh, yep, that's where you get that. In Kandan and Truganu, there's also a whole bunch of different river systems. So because you have river systems right there, so it's very hard for water to actually seep into the ground. So when you have a combination of a ton of rainfall, and lots of dense river systems, what you have is that the water doesn't really pass into the ground and thus flooding. Now you might be thinking to yourself, but why is this a problem in 2024? And you know what? You'd be absolutely right to ask that because the Malaysian government's been spending billions on billions of ringgit in order to solve this problem right here. In fact, in the 12 Malaysian plan, they spend more than 22 billion ringgit trying to do that right there. God knows how they've been spending that money though, because as of November 2024, only one of the major flood mitigation projects has actually been completed right there, and everything else has just been delayed. And before you know it, there is a vicious cycle that's basically the delay causing the delay causing the delay causing the delay. Flooding is a public hazard right there, but when it comes to like huge projects like flood mitigation, there's like actually a ton of different small projects inside that right there. And when you have a ton of small projects with tons of different contractors, all of Kelantan, Trengganu, Kedah, and most of the flood assailed states are past states. Despite the idea that the governments there are the most holy governments in the entirety of Malaysia right there. Malaysians are totally right to be sus about projects like this right here. Probably most of you know that I'm not exactly a big fan of PASS right now. In fact, that's probably a bit of an understatement given that I think that they are the worst cancer to ever assault Malaysia with their poor critical thinking, lack of intelligence content telling people that every natural disaster is the result of sins. So a while ago, Pass basically said that there was this one woman who fell into a sinkhole because it was retribution from God. So when people heard that, they were so pissed off and so was I as well because somebody lost a child, a daughter, and honestly, given that they are past states, I have very little faith that they can accomplish any meaningful flood mitigation. But when a politician is going up to you and saying it was God's will that you would be flooded, that you would not have water, your economy would remain undeveloped, and that everything that you are experiencing right now will continue to worsen over time, it has nothing to do with us. The moment anything goes wrong, then they will say, we're just here to spread the message. For me, that's the kind of thing that I can't stand in modern day politics. And when I look at the fact that Kelantan, Trunganu, and all these states flood every single year, I cannot help but just think to myself that 
That has to do with the fact that there are people out there complaining day in and day out and receiving government funding for a problem that they are not solving. Now, I'm not going to go to the point of saying that, well, they're probably not solving the problem because they're intentionally trying to avoid it so that they can keep on getting government money or funding right there. I don't think that we're at that level right now. But this is a problem that has been happening year after year and no matter where we go and what we do, we don't see things improving right there, which then makes us wonder why it is that we as the Malaysian people have money taken out for the purpose of dealing with this simple project right here, but then the government just comes up to us with all these excuses about land approvals here, there, and everywhere right there. It's like, how much corruption is there in this system that this cannot be done? I mean, we don't know, but it is something that we do need to deal with so that we can stop giving the people of Kedah and Kelantan an excuse to say, we are suffering so much, we blame the government, therefore let's vote pass. But you know, to kind of close this video right here, I think that the people of Kelantan, Trunganu, and all of the different states that are facing this problem right here need to start having a very serious conversation with their elected representatives about what's going on right here. All right, and that's it right there. If you are watching this from where there is a flood, uh, be safe. I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next video.